Hello everybody, and today we are looking at the Mosin Nagant added to Payday 2 in the Gage Historical Pack. Now, this is one of the best sniper rifles in the game, offering a decent ammo pool, decent damage, and overall a good feel to it. Now, if you're, gun like, if you're a gun nut like myself, you would know that the Mosin Nagant has quite the history to it. It was Russia's main infantry rifle during World War One and World War Two. It's probably my favorite sniper rifle that exists. Uh, this model in particular is not actually an original Mosin Nagat sniper rifle. It is a reproduction, you can tell by the fact that the scope mount is where the forward sight typically is rather than over the bolt, which actually makes more sense in my opinion because you can load it with the stripper clips. Now let's talk about the mods. Okay, for this weapon, you have three barrel options, the short barrel, long barrel, and silence barrel. I personally recommend the short barrel for concealment, long barrel for long-range engagements, and f as far as the silence barrel goes, I'd recommend equipping this for a silent killer build and nothing else, really, because this doesn't add concealment and it doesn't f mesh well with a concealable build, so stealth isn't really an option with this barrel. Uh, next, there's the bayonet, which is, this is an interesting thing, and it enhances your default gun butt wep melee strike with a bayonet. Now, this is an exclusive mod for just the most they got, which is pretty, you know, it's interesting. It decreases concealment by a bit, increases the damage dealt with your uh, weapon butt melee. Now, I personally recommend the long barrel, again, because the concealment on this can be modded for concealment, but it's not high enough, in my opinion, to be really worth it, it unless you're running, like, a dodge build with uh, Sneaky Bastard Aced, or a crit build with... Uh, I can't remember the name of the skill now, but uh, I personally like the iron sights just because you know most of the got iron sights. It's you know a bit of a classic look, and uh, this discreet stock it doesn't really fit my taste. It's kind of a mo ooh modern tactical thing, but why would you do that if not just to have you know the classic? wood furnishings on this weapon. Now, if you look at the stats, it has a uh, magazine of 5, total ammo of 25. I have fully loaded ace, so that's why it says 31 there. Rate of fire of 60, damage of 280, accuracy of 92, stability of 12, concealment of 6, and threat of 28. Now, I have mods and uh, skills that buff these stats quite a bit, but, you know, Assuming you have no skills, no anything, you're just getting into the game, this is, these are the base stats, it shows you right there. Uh, so, now let's get into some gameplay. Okay, and here we are doing oh, Aftershock on Overkill, this is my loadout that I like to run with this rifle, the Nagant Sniper Rifle, the Chicago Typewriter meshes with it pretty well because it, First of all, it kind of has that, you know, classic look to it, as well as it's a high rate of fire submachine gun with a good amount of total ammo, good at close range, and it's good a good counter to the Nagant's long range capabilities. The buzzer, just because I'm running jokers and it's easier to joker a enemy if you're tasing them. Molotov cocktails, because, you know, yeah. Uh, improved combined tactical vests, just... I'm running an armor build, and Dr. Bags, because I'm also running a combat medic build. So here we are in the gameplay. Uh, so this weapon is a pretty good sniper rifle. It's not like a Thanatos or anything, but it's not meant to be, I don't think. It's more of a in-between of the Rattlesnake and the Thanatos doing, uh, you know, doing a better job than the Rattlesnake, but not as good of a job as the Thanatos, but it does have more total ammo. It ha does actually less damage than the M308, but it has this penetration that wasn't well demonstrated, but also, you know, it's in motion the gaunt. It's the, it is the sniper rifle, or bolt action rifle, is, if you want to be technical with it, but... Uh, yeah. I like having the bayonet on there, despite not using the, uh weapon butt melee just because I like the look of it. I like the kind I, I, I just lo love this gun. I love the look. I love its function. It's a very good 
if you want a bolt action that's good at close range and long range, this is the gun for you. Uh, seeing as it can actually equip legitimate iron sights rather than just the uh, iron sights weapon mod. Wow, my shots. Okay. Come on, come on. There you go. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, it You can see it loads with the triple clips. Five rounds. And, uh... It fu I mean, it fu it works like a most in the gun. Like, if you've ever... You know? 76 2 by 54 which is the same bullet as an AK-47, but with more powder behind it. So it's, you know... Whereas the AK-47 uses a assault rifle cartridge, this uses just a plain old rifle cartridge. This is a fantastic weapon, great value, and quite frankly, I'd recommend getting the uh, Gage Historical Pack DLC on this alone if you're not too worried about money. Oh, bulldozer kill from the ground! Yeah! Okay, uh... That's what my teammates can... Yep. Hollow Hobo Chris. Well, you're right at home on this map with all the hobos here. So, yep. Yeah, I guess that's actually all I need to say about this weapon. It's a good long-range, good close-range. It's a very nice all-round sniper rifle. You know, if you're running saws as a secondary or something like that, you don't really need your secondary weapon while using this weapon. Sniper rifle. I know I got down there, but that was more of me trying to talk and play at the same time rather than the weapon itself. You know, you don't have to talk while playing, so you would be able to concentrate better on the game and thusly do better in the game. So, uh, that's it for this weapon, so now let's move on to the next. Hello everyone, and now after looking at the most of got, we are now moving on to the Buzzsaw 42 light machine gun. Now this is based off of the Machine Gewehr 32, I, I mean... Sorry, 42, f f used in World War II by the German forces. Now, this is the gun that made American soldiers quiver in fear over its massive rate of fire. The sound of it was terrifying even to the hardened American troops of the time. Now, the reason being for this is because it uses a u fairly unique at the time belt-fed system, which was not co so commonly adopted at the time and also not so well-refined at the time. Thusly, the MG42 was really unlike anything else during World War II. It had the, probably the highest rate of fire of anything that could be carried by a soldier, to my knowledge at least. Now, for mods, we have the light barrel, which kind of makes it look like a MG34, to be honest with you. Like, if you know what that is, you know, you would see what I mean. Uh, let's go ahead and equip that because it increases stability and accuracy and for a light machine gun you really need those two stats there's also the heat sink suppressed barrel which is good if you have a silent killer build but for the purposes of this video we are not using that uh... now it's really a matter of choosing do you want stability or accuracy now this bipod pretty much determines which one of those you're going to pick because while deployed with the bipod your stability gets enhanced all the way up to a hundred but your accuracy stays the same so if you want to use this for kind of as a deployable area denial weapon, you know, you want to be accurate, you want to be able to take down SWAT vans, you're, you're going to want to use the tactical compensator. However, if you want this to be more viable when carried, you're going to use the competitor's compensator. Now, I'm going to use the tactical con compensator because I personally love the bipod and I love how it functions. So, I'm going to use that. Uh, gadgets, you know, just pick the LED combo, it has the highest stability increase, and it's really a no-brainer. There's a concealment loss, but this weapon is not the weapon that you bring to a stealth mission. Okay, now that we're done with mods, we're going into the stats. Now, this has a base magazine of 150, pretty, you know, below average for light machine guns, only tied with, I mean, eh, pretty average, actually, for light machine guns, tied with the Brenner 21, and higher than the RPK, but lower than the KSP and the KSP 58. A total ammo of 450, rate of fire of 1200, damage of 36, accuracy of 28, stability of 36, concealment of 2, and threat of 31. Now, as you can see, I have mods and skills to change all this, you know, buff the ammo with fully loaded, buff the damage with, I think, perk deck completion maybe, I don't know, and buff the accuracy and stability with mods, and then threat with, I think... I don't know. But anyway, 
So this light machine gun is best used with a high accuracy secondary. So let's get right out of there. And then, so like for instance, the Judge is a good choice because it's uh, fairly accurate, high damage, as well as it can, with slugs, punch through shields. This is good because the the Buzzsaw 42 is good against literally everything except for shields. So this is a good kind of covering your bases. The RPGs the the RPG is okay as far as a secondary for this because you know you can in you can take out shields with it, but I'm the the ammo restraint kind of restricts you quite heavily with this weapon, so I would personally advise against it. You could also put the rep, the uh, locomotive or street sweeper with slugs, but I personally prefer the judge as it has higher damage and it's. Quite frankly, a judge, which is one of my favorite uh, shotguns ever, because it's you know it's a revolver and a shotgun. The Peacemaker 45 also, you know, that's a good uh, secondary to equip alongside this. The cross kill also is a pretty good weapon to add to this. You know, Bronco, your high damage, high accuracy, sec high accuracy secondaries will help you here. So now let's get into some gameplay. Hello everyone, now we are in cook-off with the Buzzsaw 42 light machine gun. Now I have the Judge Shotgun as my secondary, as mentioned before, it can penetrate shields, whereas the Buzzsaw 42 is meant for everything else. This is meant for shields exclu almost exclusively. Uh, the, buzzer the buzzer, if not only just because it makes the process of obtaining a Joker a lot easier. Well, of Cocktails, you know, good area of denial tool. Improved combined tactical vest, because armor build and Dr. Bag because medic build. So let's get into it. Okay, let's do this. So the Buzzsaw 42, while carried, is only viable at close to mid ranges, and saying mid is on, get, putting it a little bit too generous, in fact, because it really is only a close range weapon while being carried, but this weapon's true strength is not in being carried, it is in being mounted with a bipod, uh, as I will show you in a, just a little bit, so, okay, uh, this heist is really perfect for the Buzzsaw 42, seeing as it's a very much a defensive heist, you know, you're supposed to kind of defend the lab, defend the house, you know, keep everyone out, make sure all the enemies die before they even get in. And this, that is really what plays to the strengths of this weapon. It's a very nice kind of area of denial. And the accuracy is pretty dang good, as you can see. It's just, you know, that's maybe the silhouette of one enemy. But if I just tap it, see, it's just... Uh, and not to mention, spread doesn't really matter while mounted on a bipod. It just kind of, as long as it... You can kind of tap it a little bit, and that'll be good. Or you can spam it, and that's also good. But make sure if you spam it, there's a large crowd. Because you, if you just hold down the trigger, it's going to end up being a waste of ammo because you're, you'll you inevitably kill enemies before you intend to and waste shots because of it. So where are they coming from? I don't know where they're coming from. I'm in the bus today. I'm to demonstrate my bipods. Okay. Yeah, that, that's one thing about the bipods is that they're a bit finicky. Oh, I might be anti shield device right here. Well, it's not very good. Taser killed by a taser. Uh, you know, cook-off is also good, you know, if you're carrying it around for the inside portion. As well as you can just kind of mount on the staircase and just kind of lay waste to anything below. With muscle, it has that nice disturbing the peace skill, which causes the enemies to just kind of have a little panic attack. The ammo pickup on this weapon is pretty superb, even without fully loaded, but at fully lo loaded, you'll basically never run out of ammo for this weapon. A g running theme with the Gage Historical Pack is that the weapons tend to be very good on their own without really 
much need for a secondary. I mean, the Nagat only really needs a secondary for when you run out of ammo, and the Buzzsaw really only needs a secondary for when you have a shield. And your other allies can, uh, if you strategize your weapons, uh, mitigate that as well. So if you're running saws or something, you can very easily just run saws on this and you wouldn't be missing too much. I do personally think that if you are, for the purposes of running saws, that the Nagant is superior just for the ability to take out shields. Uh, but, oh, I just killed my own Joker there. But, um, this is definitely viable to carry on its own. If you, have, Especially if you have Iron Man Ace, you can just melee the shields and you don't have to worry about that. Uh, you know, it's good to have a secondary that can take out shields pretty well. There, but, uh, similar end to this episode, I mean, the similar end to this part of the video as the last part, except I think this time I'm actually going to get revived, which will give me time to talk about the sort of downside. For one, there is no aim down sight, you just kind of have to do this weird zoom in thing, despite the fact that there are literally sights right on the side of the weapon. Uh, uh, as well as, because of the incredibly high rate of fire, despite it having 150 rounds of ammo, you are going to burn through that quite quickly. You're not going to really run out of ammo total quite quickly. Uh, you know, you'll as long as you're not killing enemies outside the bounds of the map and you're running around enough picking up ammo, you're good. As well as in the recent Crime Fest Day 1 update, they rebalanced a ton of the weapons as well as removed the movement speed pe penalty on light machine guns. So you can have, if you want, a speedy sort of dodge build if you want for this. It's quite good for defensive maps, you know. Uh, Hotline Miami Day 2, or Day 1 for that matter, if you're cooking, uh, Bank, Big Bank, First World Bank, really any bank, it works, because, you know, you got to look for drills and stuff, especially if you're doing overdrill, this is really good for that, because you just kind of count yourself, and just kind of, you know, sit back, if enemies come up, you shoot them, and if there's a sheet, oh, it, Place your switch to your uh, judge, and then there you go. And I guess that's it for this weapon. Time to move on to the next. Okay, and now after looking at the Nagant and the Buzzsaw, we are now looking at the uh, Broomstick Pistol. Now, this is based on the Mauser C96 or the Broom Handle Mauser. This is a, you know, High accuracy, okay concealment, secondary. Its total ammo is okay. Uh, you know, it's you know kind of middle in the middle of the road in all stats. Now we're kind of seeing a pattern here with the weapons in this pack. Uh, now the mods for it, basic you know pistol bar barrel extensions don't need to go into that. Uh, except for there is one exclusive mod which is the damper L44 which. It's kind of pointless to equip if you have the uh, Gage Mod Courier Flash Hider because it's better in literally every way. They Really, I wish they would have balanced the gadgets as well during that uh, balancing update for the weapons because that would have made a lot more interesting combinations of modifications in order to, you know, really fine-tune your weapon to what you're wanting to do rather than just having... Oh, if you have a suppressor, do this. Or if you, oh, if you have a, you know, it's not really. There's no fun in it, really. It's just, oh, is this is best. This, 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 and this, and that's it. Uh, combined module you can equip for. You know, that's the highest stability. You can increase it by, or if you want to go stealth, you could equip the uh, micro laser. But it still is on this weird thing, which. It's kind of ugly. Um, high capacity magazine. Obviously, you wouldn't equip this if you're going stealth, but for loud, it's you know fine. Sight, I wouldn't really recommend unless you're building it to be like 
you can either build this to be a pistol or you can build it to be a carbine. If you want to build it to be a carbine, then uh, the barrel sight 44 is okay, which I'll equip right now because really the ability to turn this into a carbine is interesting. Uh, now, minus 3 damage is not that much considering the weapon's total damage, so that's fine. Uh, 12 accuracy, 4 stability, that's really pretty good. So, you know, in this state, it's pretty good. As well as the holster stock, which increases stability by 16. This pretty much gives you the most easy-to-shoot-with accurate pistol in the game. It just is so... It has 100 stability, which makes it, you know, there's zero recoil. You can just spam it, and you have no problems. Uh, accuracy is 56, which is not extremely good. Damage is only 40, which, again, not extremely good, but it does have a high total ammo, and its rate of fire is also, you know, it's really an okay weapon. It's not great at anything, but it's not bad at anything. So it's really, we're noticing quite the trend in this pack of weapons that are, you know, good all-rounders, but not really good at anything in particular. Uh... Now, a good companion with this is actually the Buzzsaw 42, which is, you know, a good, uh, it's a good secondary for, I mean, it's a good primary to equip to, you know, because the broom handle Mauser is a good, accurate, you know, you're going for headshots with it, so you could equip that, you could equip, you know, an explosive weapon like the Moscone with slugs, I mean, with explosive slugs, sorry. Uh, the Jocelyn with slugs is a good option. Uh, you know, I'm trying to look for stuff that if you don't have any DLC or just this DLC would work. Uh, the Nagant as well, you know, is a good companion to this weapon. There's really a lot of good companions to this. Uh, but I personally am going to run with the, uh, Jocelyn with slugs, and the reason being is because I do not like being without a weapon that can take out a shield, and um, unless I have Iron Man Ace, and this is a good way to compensate for that. For those of you asking for a musket in the game, this is basically a two-shot musket. You know, it's... You're able to fire it twice before reloading mo rather than once. I, why do I have... Weird. Okay, uh... You can fire it twice without reloading rather than once. It's 70 caliber, which is actually higher than the uh, r original musket, I think. Like, 66 caliber, maybe? I don't know. Uh, by the way, we got to look at the sets. The magazine is 10, total ammo 150, rate of fire 667, uh, damage 40, accuracy 44, stability 60, Concealment 28, Threat 10. Uh, now, if you look at this, you'll notice all the stats are kind of middle of the road as far as the overall stats of it. It's just kind of a... a, a as a whole, it is a middle of the road weapon. It is not here nor there as far as how good it is. But as you can see, we have it actually exactly modded to have 100 stability, and that is really the best statistic about it, is this is the most, or at least one of the most stable pistols you can get in the game. Except, modded the way it is, it's kind of a carbine, not a carbine carbine, whichever you say. It's more of that. Uh, so, now that we've shown you the weapon itself, let's go into some gameplay. Okay, now we are in Hoxton Breakout. Uh, the, my loadout is, again, generally the same as I had for the previous weapons, except for this loadout, I'm going to equip the Dynamite. Now, the reason for the Dynamite is because in this heist, there's the Black Dozer in the control room, which it's really hard to take out with either of these weapons, so bringing in the Dynamite makes it easier to, you know, I can take out the bulldozer, it can't be shot out of the air, it'll at least take its masks off, uh, you know, and it's pretty decent, it's like the grenade except less damage but it can't be shot out of the air. Uh, 
so a couple notes about this weapon. It is pretty good against weak enemies. Like, it can one-shot the blues. It can, I think, one-shot a green. I don't think it can one-shot a tan. Uh, like, we'll have to demonstrate. Uh, you can see that 9mm. That, uh, or, yeah, I think 9mm. I'll have to... If I'm wrong, I'll put an annotation in there. There you go. Uh, yep. So, yep, kind of a long range. See that guy? See? Well, if you want a M1 carbine in the game, well, this is the closest thing you can get at the moment. It is a... Really, those are already... Let's see if it can take out a tan. No, it is not good. It cannot take out a tan in one shot. However, you can just kind of spam it if you want because of that 100 stability. It has no recoil. Yep, let me just... 20 rounds. Yep. Now we switch to our... Throw dynamite. Hold on. Yeah, this is the situation where this weapon really fails. Is if you're cornered by a bulldozer, this is not a good weapon. As well as, this is more of a team player type weapon. Kind of a... It's really, you know, it's a silo. It is... If you need something to work, if your primary is out of ammo, then this is what you use. Although it's, you know, the damage is low. Uh, I can't personally recommend this weapon. This is by far the weakest in the entire pack. Uh, it's good for, like, normal and hard, but it's not really good for anything beyond that. I'd stick to maybe a cross kill. You know, something that's in the base game because the damage is just too low to really justify being a staple of the world. So, it has a good ammo pool and good ammo pickup and a good magazine. It's just not... Y you might get some fun out of it, but I personally think, you know, it's not very good. But... Okay, so now to move on to the final weapon. Okay, and now the final weapon in the pack, we have the Sterling Submachine Gun. This is kind of the, uh, you know, this is kind of the bigger brother to the Sten. It's British made just like the Sten. In fact, it was, it was made to be just a bigger Sten. That's what it was designed to be, and it succeeded. It's pretty unique in its design. It has this side magazine here, which is not too common. I mean, for its era, World War II type kind of era-ish, you know, around that time, uh, it was pretty common, but it's not common today because we typically see this magazine sticking straight up and down. Uh, yeah, and it's, you know, this is the highest damage Sorry, it was the highest damage to the machine gun for a while, uh, but now it's been kind of... I wouldn't say nerfed, but it's just kind of different now. It's got more of a, again, all-around feel to it. It's a... Like, all these weapons are all-rounders. If you want something that... Uh, you know, if you have saws or you need to equip a... If you have saws or a grenade launcher or something like that, this is a good weapon to equip to compensate for that because it can really work at all ranges and be pretty dang good. Or there is an alternative. You can indeed modify this to be basically the submachine gun equivalent to if you know the Eagle Heavy or the um, M308. It can be kind of the submachine gun version of that. Obviously not as powerful, seeing as it's a secondary and all, but it's okay. Uh, yep, and, you know, accuracy. Now you can just, if you want, which I'm going to do here, you can equip 
single fire, which that pretty much locks this into being a marksman kind of carbine, is what it is. It's a it's gonna be a lot like the uh, broom handle Mauser, except kind of bigger, bulkier, less concealment. Now, if you, obviously, you know, to each his own, if you want, you can, uh, remove the single fire thing and then have it be, you know, if you need it, you can do the full auto. But for this weapon in particular, I'd go with the, just lock it in the semi. And then this is, yeah, it's a, now you have a, pretty much a carbine, like it's a, this is based off of the Sterling. I don't know if I said that already. Uh, yep. It's very accurate. I mean, not... I say that, but it's not the most accurate, but it's okay. The, that ammo pool is pretty great, actually. Uh, yep. And, again, this is the trend of this weapon pack, is... The stats are not really one way or another as far as anything. Now, as a primary to kind of compensate for this weapon, you can equip the Sega, you know, which is a nice... This is the full auto shotgun that you don't need any DLC for, and it's, you know, it's a pretty decent weapon. It's pretty accurate. You can equip all the shotgun ammo types if you got them. Uh... And it's fully automatic. A bit higher rate of fire, but that's not really a factor, because the stability doesn't really warrant it. But Okay. So now we are going to go into some gameplay. And, you know, same loadout as before. You know, for the first three weapons, except with the Sega instead, I'm actually going to go back to the Molotov. Actually... I heard that this penetrates shield, so I'm going to try that. If it does, then that's actually pretty good, if it does. I'm not sure, though. So, we're just going to test that. I know there's a weird crit build you can do that makes it kill a bulldozer in one shot, but that's... And as you can see, this is overkill at one shot. Uh, murky water guard with a headshot, so that's not bad at all. This is more of a, if you need something to be your only weapon, like you have saws or you have a situational primary, this is very good for that kind of, you know, all-rounder. You can use the laser set at close range or give it a scope and then it's long range. Not much to say about this, really. I mean, it's it's comparable to the uh, Kernkov, except it has more total ammo but less damage. And that's really it. It's very accurate. It's laser accurate if you just you can spam it okay enough. The stability is high enough to do that at close range. I mean, you know, I'm already at my ammo cap, so it's very ammo efficient. Uh, although I do have fully loaded ace, so that might be swaying in a bit. And yeah, it's just an alright, all round weapon. Similar to the rest of the weapons in this pack, it can be used as a only weapon if need be. Now, Unless you have saws, this you know, is just me being kind of stupid. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now, an obvious downside with this is that some machine guns don't have any skills attached to them, so this isn't this is as good as it gets. I mean, you can buff the fire rate with the uh, SMG special skill. But that doesn't really make it 
good considering there's just the semi-auto fire and I can just... You can spam it as fast as you can click. So if you're building it in this way... Oh. No, it cannot. Okay. You can't just shoot it from back there. That is pretty satisfying, though, just to be able to throw a javelin at a shield. I'll talk about the... I'll, I'll talk about the, uh, medieval pack later. Yeah, it's not one of my favorites, just, uh... One, it's probably gonna be the last one of these DLCs I review. You know, if, barring any additional DLC after, that comes out after I'm done reviewing all of these. Uh... But, yeah. So, really, I mean, this DLC pack contains a lot of weapons that are good to synchronize with saws. I mean, they don't, they don't really synergize with the primaries or secondaries. You know, if you... The secondaries don't synergize with the primaries, the primaries don't synergize with the secondaries. So it's kind of a... With the exception of the buzzsaw being able to have the judge kind of back it up but so that's it now we're just gonna real quick gloss over the melee okay uh the melees in this pack are not really that sp anything that special i mean there's the swagger stick which is like i believe that's a german pow camp baton that they used to you know, hit their prisoners in the line, I think. Uh, Potato Masher, this is a German hand grenade that I guess is inactive, that's why you use it as a melee. Trench knife, you know, it's a trench knife. And the Amer Spear of Freedom, which has, you know, some of the highest damage of any melee weapon, so if you want a high damage melee but don't have any other DLC, this is really a good thing to start you off because it can one shot a tan if you hit him the right way. Uh, this is a real quick hitter, you can, you know, use it quite quickly. The knockdown on the potato masher is okay and the swagger stick and the potato masher are basically the same. It's just potato masher has a bit worse range, that's it. So, I don't, I'm not personally a big fan of melees, they're just not all that different to each other to justify them being the basis of a DLC, like, if they're, they're a nice little addition if you want them, so it's, you know, it's good to have, but, you know, I guess we can't all be the buzzer or the kunai or something like that, but, so, and now we're just we're gonna real quick gloss over the masks. Like there's the old blood and guts. They're, they're basically caricatures of different factions during World War Two. So like British Bulldog. This is like a Winston Churchill type, like <laughs> like a kind of like that. Uh, you know, American like. Kind of like, what's his name? Um, Sylvester Stallone, I guess you could say, if he were in a World War II movie. As well as, there's two that I don't have. Uh, there's the, where is it? I know I have all four of them. Okay. Yeah, okay, there's the Russian bear mask, you know. Kind of a Kolmorad, like a Joseph Stalin-ish thing. And the... I know I have it somewhere. Where is it? Oh, here it is. The Constable, which is a French, you know... French coward mask. I mean, that's really what it is. You know. Which is 
it's kind of sad that the French are considered cowards because of World War II, even though they were just so beaten up after World War One that that's why they they just couldn't. They had didn't have the manpower. All their citizens were either too young or too old to fight, so they didn't really have the resources necessary to do another war so soon. I mean, they were hit too hard by World War One. So, that's just the masks. I mean, you know, the... Uh, and so now I'll real quick go over a quick synopsis of how to do all the achievements. Uh, like, I'll just show you, then I'll go into them. Okay, so now I'll go into a quick tutorial on each achievement to give you a bit of a uh, a, a bit of a head start on doing them. Now, real quick, the Winds of Change achievement is based around you're going to have a lot easier time getting that achievement if you have all four of these historical masks, which the achievements are unlocked for them as follows. The first one is the uh, Scoundrel achievement or something like that, where you pretty much take this and modify it. Just modify it to be this. Or it might be might be with the site, I think, maybe. I think it's with the site. Just try it with the site, try it without the site. It's something like this, but it's pretty easy. Uh, but first you have to do... Uh, one of the other achievements, which I will get into soon. Okay, the next achievements we're going to look at is the Okay, the next achievement we're going to look at is the special operations execution achievement, which is first of all a mouthful and second of all pretty easy and self-explanatory. I'm not going to really tutorial give you a tutorial of it. It's pretty simple. Uh just get 25 kills during stealth with this trench knife. Uh, if you want, you can just go on a heist with a lot of guards and just melee kill them. You know, a heist like uh, rats might do you good if you bring ECMs and just kill all the enemies in there, restart, kill them again until you have the achievement. You know, these kill enemies and stealth achievements aren't really that great, in my opinion. In fact, I'm not a big fan of unlocking mods through achievements at all, really, but this is how you do it. The Winds of Change achievement is to have complete Hoxton Breakout on Overkill, where you and three other heisters are wearing each one of these masks. So it can't be all four of you wearing old blood and guts. That won't work. So it has to be one with the Bulldog, one with the old blood and guts, one with the Russian bear, and one with the constable. Now, this is the most difficult achievement in the pack, just because it's really hard to find someone who has all four. It's going to be a lot easier if you yourself have all four of these, especially the constable one, because that's, uh, at least in my experience, getting the achievement was the least common. Okay, so the way you do the bullet hell achievement is... This one is a pretty unpredictable one. You just, just kind of have to use the buzzsaw and wait for a right moment to have it. Is just you have to kill 10 enemies within 10 seconds. 
Now, on higher difficulties, this can be easier if you just have uh, bipod equipped. You know, enemies will kind of pour in during police assaults, especially if Winters is there. Uh, so that's what you do with that. And with the Nagant, actually, the Death from Below achievement, I can actually show you something that really helps with this achievement. It's so I'll cut to. I'll cut to it, and then I can show you what I'm doing. Okay, first thing you're going to need to do is load up Hoxton Breakout on Overkill. Or, any difficulty is fine. Ver I actually loaded it up on very hard, because this is a... You know, it's, a, it's pretty easy if you know how to do it. It's that kind of achievement of... Alright. So now I'll cut to the spot I'm talking about. Alright, and here's the point where you kind of need to... See? They're going to just kind of keep every so often repelling down from up there. See? Oh, make sure to keep reloaded, but... And this is where you stay, is you just kind of... Then you just do that until you have the achievement. And then there you go. You have the Constable Max. And the Constable Mask really is the least likely mask for someone else to have, so this is the arguably the most important achievement to get if you want to also get Winds of Change. I'm not sure if you need to shoot them after, like, I'm not sure if that ca would count, or if you need to shoot them like that, or like I would have if that would have hit, so. I don't know, there's a lot of variables to be accounted for that I don't really know the answer to, but that is a good way of getting the achievement that is really quicker than you could ever do in any other heist. Okay, that's it for the review of the Gage Historical Pack. Now, what do I think of the pack as a whole? Well, this is an excellent DLC to get if you have no DLC right now. Uh, like, this is definitely the first weapon pack you should purchase if you are considering purchasing DLC. I do not think it's the first DLC you should purchase overall, though that would probably go to Gage Mod Courier, because it, Gage Mod Courier enhances all the weapons in the game by default, rather than just adding four new weapons. Uh, but, what this DLC does give you that no other DLC does, is it gives you both a light machine gun and a sniper rifle, which there is no sniper rifle for the community yet. There is a community light machine gun, which, there you go, but... It's not as good, in my opinion, as the Buzzsaw 42. So, you know, it's a good DLC to get if you have none already. That's the consensus. So, that's it for this video. Stay tuned for the next one. Like a fellow once said, ain't that a kick in the head? Like a sailor said, quote, ain't that a hole in the bowl? My head keeps spinning. I go to sleep and keep grinning, if this is just the beginning, my life is gonna be beautiful, the room was completely bl- I hugged her and she hugged back, like a sailor once said, ain't that a kick in the head, tell me quick, Oh, ain't that a kick? Tell me quick.